Lincoln Holmes finds recognizing a face impossible. 30 years ago, he was in a car accident that damaged an isolated part of his brain. And he is now completely face blind. On those moments when I am suddenly alone and I don't know where anybody that I'm with is, there can be a surge of fear, and it's lonely in that sense. The very thought of something so basic as recognizing faces being lost is not only hard to imagine, but it's pretty scary. What's that? That's a key. Great. That's an apple. Okay. That's a place setting with a uh, knife, fork, and spoon, and a plate. All right. Who is it? Um. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Uh, young woman, old woman. To be very honest, I'm, I'm having trouble uh, answering that question. It's hard to imagine what Lincoln is actually seeing when he looks at a face. It seems that his brain is not allowing him to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. Instead, he is confronted with a jumbled up mixture of features which he cannot connect with even the most familiar of faces. Okay, how about that person? I don't know. Any sense of familiarity? No. No. What about the, uh, there's a child's face sort of looking over his shoulder. Any familiarity there? This is the nastiest one of all, isn't it? Yes. It is. This is me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How do, you, how do you feel looking at a picture of your own face and not recognizing it? For me, uh, it is a face. It's not my face. It's a face. And there is some sense of incompleteness there. When I'm asked by people sometimes, do faces just all look the same? Uh, the answer to that question is that, uh, no, they don't all look the same. None of them look like anyone. They all are faces, but they are not recognizable as anyone's face. Any of them. He, he sees the skin, he can see the texture of the skin, he can see the individual features fairly well, but what he doesn't see is the, the totality of the face. He can't um, simultaneously apprehend all of those different parts together. And that's what we have to do to be able to recognize a face. It seems that facial recognition is such a demanding and important part of our lives that we need to dedicate a whole subsystem of the brain to this task. And the work with Lincoln suggests that this face area plays no role in recognizing any other type of object. In Ottawa, Kevin Chappelle provides another vital clue to the brain's visual recognition system. He has no trouble with faces, but a car accident has left him totally unable to make sense of the world. He sees all the details, but not what things are. Well, after all these years, I've kind of got used to it now. It's me, it's how I am, it's my world. Often I'll let things just pass me by. 
if I have to, then I'll make an effort to figure out what it is. For example, um, you know, the upper part of what I'm seeing is blue, therefore I'm probably sky. So it's not like he has lost his knowledge of what objects are, and it's not like he simply cannot produce the name for it. You know, maybe he's just forgotten what the word is. None of those can account for his problem. The problem is an inability for the information from the visual world that's coming into his brain to make contact with this knowledge that he has about objects. Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. Cassius Clay. Yeah, absolutely right. Good. Albert Einstein. Good. Um, it's um, oblong. Um, it's got lots of legs on it. <sighs> There's a black thing at the top of it. Um, I don't know what it is. If I told you that it was a kind of scrubbing brush, and what okay. you refer to as the legs are actually the bristles. Oh, okay. The black part at the top is actually just a shadow that's falling from the lighting. It's not actually part of the object itself. Okay, I, I can see how that could be a scrubbing brush. Okay. But I didn't get it. Uh-huh. Give and then go. Somebody go for the net. Okay. Kevin Chappelle helps us understand the process at work. When he walks onto a football field, he doesn't understand a thing. He sees green, but doesn't recognize the grass. He coaches the local football team, even though the moving white object doesn't come together in his head as a ball. Kevin uses his memories from before the accident, which damaged his brain, to imagine what is in front of him. These images are so vivid, it allows him to hide how little he actually sees. In the middle there. When the players get <laughs> in together and they're, they're sort of tackling each other and there's sort of a scramble in the goal mouth. I can't tell you what's going on. It's like this collage of different colours and movement. Give it to him. It's the images stored inside his brain that allow Kevin to cope with the world around him. His brain damage has left these pathways undamaged, even though his recognition system is completely destroyed. Go ahead. A kind of a plate with writing on it. Why don't you go and hold it? Go on, go ahead and hold it. Close your eyes. Feels like an old M45. 